oh, one centimeter gap there. So what I'm going to do is poke the fishing line up and first of all see if I can influence that. It'll either do something or nothing. But this is a uh, 55 pound breaking strain nylon line. So we're going to watch that uh, uh, air gap there and see if I can do anything. See if I can get the nylon in there in the first place I guess. No, it's not going to go. Uh, that does not want to go around the, the first bend. Oh it has. Oh. Right, I'm actually displacing mercury. So where did that go? Okay, I've put a little lid there to catch any mercury that gets uh, displaced. Um, it'll only be the volume of the nylon line that uh, displaces it. Um, it is actually going in and I can see it's just down there I don't know if the camera is catching that but where that bead is just underneath you can see or I can see the nylon going in there this is a bit of tube that's out of an aerosol um, that I kept obviously knowing that one day I could just use that and look at that that's about the right size so will that help me probably not as much as I want because I need another one I need another one hey look at that uh, you can, we're just about to come out of the end of there now so look let's see now the line on line has gone through the oh look look see joining hey it's joined hey that works so there you go look, lads that's uh, that's a that's a first for me oh look look see joining hey it's joined hey that works so there you go look, lads that's a, that's a that's a first for me because I've never done that before but maybe that'll help uh, some of the people um, I've cut enough nylon line to um, uh, to go all the way down here so I'm carry on pushing that through. Say so I'm I've not done this before, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. And um, who knows? I don't know how far I've got there. I think I'm going to see if I can find another aerosol that I can take apart and get a bit more of this thin uh, sleeve. I'll also get that mercury uh, recovered. Gosh, any other time in this mercury would would run so freely you wouldn't believe it. Um, I think the other name for mercury is quicksilver and when you play with it, boy, do you, do you understand why. Gotcha. I keep all sorts of bits of rubbish that uh, some that you'll recognise. Um, yeah, and uh, you sort of think, well, when is that ever going to come in useful? And look at this. That's the uh, a spent biro. So that's a little bit of thin plastic. It's just going to, you know, just going to be absolutely right for what I want. Um, but as an inventor, if you haven't got stuff, you know, where do you get your inspiration from? So let's see the biro in place. The uh, tube has gone down to the end there. Oops, sorry. Hopefully I'm catching that. So the inner tube has gone down there. So now I should be able to, yeah, I can push that uh, uh, 
nylon line in. Let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm pushing the nylon line in and I can see where that's got to. I'll just get a good close up there because hopefully this is going to be another good one. So this is where the line is now and fortunately it's come right where I want it. So this is just one of those little air inclusions and I'm poking that through. I hope the camera is catching that. I can see you very clearly. And it's just going to break into. Ah, look at that. Did you see it rush at it then? It's just going to break into. Ah, look at that. Did you see it rush at it then? Um, I've got another one now about uh, six inches further down. So that's there. And we'll see if we can do that the same. I figured it would do it, but don't ask me how I thought about it. It just seems obvious to me. Look, it looks as though that, um, as though bubbles won't tip out on their own. I don't know if the air will come out on its own, but I might just pull that line out now and uh, tip the uh, barometer and see what happens. You can see I've got this little air inclusion here, and I was hoping be able to just to tap it and get rid of it and it, it won't go so I've got my electric razor here no. No, that's uh, that's just not going to do it, is it? That that was uh, putting my razor uh, doing that and sorry, uh, actually getting it onto the mechanism and and, and shaking it, but it's uh, obviously not enough. I know there's a risk of breaking it, but I uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. I've got some thinner line here and what I'm going to do is just, uh, it, it felt like it had cut with a sharp edge and I'm just going to put a little bead on the end, I think that that might be better. I've no idea if it's going to help or not but I'm, I'm just trying something different. Well after an hour or two I've managed to uh, get the mercury uh, free of air and I've got the uh, mercury starting to come up the U bend here. Um, I had to strip some cable and uh, get some a uh, little bit of plastic uh, tubing to go down here, but I couldn't get enough. I haven't got anything thin enough to go actually round the bend, so I've had to fill it and then tease the air out with my fishing line. And it's a real delicate balance of lifting it, getting it in. I say, um, <laughs> it's one of those things. I thought it was going to be a five-minute job, uh, but it certainly isn't. And okay, now I'm getting to the stage where I can see um, that I I need to add more mercury. But I think I'm in a position now where I can put this upright and um, not have mercury uh, bleeding all over the place. I've got rid of all of the air now so the tube is uh, safe free of any uh, imperfections in there and uh, as you could see it's it had started to to draw its vacuum and uh, now I'm just putting it back together I haven't topped up the, uh, the mercury yet but that's the, uh, the level that it's at and I'm going to put the float in and put this uh, other tube in it's a guide for this second float you see that end's been uh, flame rounded whereas the other end has got a, a sharp cut end so I'm going to have that end pointing up so that the little bit of silk or cotton whatever it is goes past a polished edge. I didn't notice that when I took it apart but uh, that makes sense so I'll do that. I've had these mercury switches for years and I never really knew what I was going to do with them but I never wanted to let them go. Um, but I want the mercury now and the real dilemma is to know uh, which one I'm going to sacrifice because uh, if I break that one I'm bound to want two as a pair for uh, something else but um, 
I think I'm going to go with that one. I don't know. It's probably the highest power one because that's got some ceramic in between the two points of contact. On the basis that this one's got a, uh, a pinch off point, which I'm hoping I can uh, um, use or a uh, break, I'm going to go with this one. So I've got my safety glasses and I'm going to try not to throw mercury on over the place. I'm working in a little plastic well, as it were. I'm going to file and uh, Nip those out of the way and then um, see if we can't and that's got it. Don't know how big a hole that's got. That's convenient. So that'll get transferred straight into here. So hopefully I've got a, a working barometer now, or will have when I put the weights in and sort the, uh, the silk out. And so long as I've got no bits of broken glass. What's that there? Yeah, there's something lurking. Oh, it's the end of the cotton. Okay, I've got uh, both floats in place. I've actually shortened the uh, thread a little as um, this. Uh, white was almost uh, touching the bottom so um, anyway I've got uh, sorry let me just uh, me um, uh, the the silk goes round uh, that little uh, pulley or that little sheaf uh, twice there um, so uh, all that remains now is for me to uh, remove uh, these two bolts take the bezel off and sort out that clash of hands on the front. Having removed the, uh, the glass and sorted the hands out there's a little central boss on the glass and uh, that supports the end of this uh, little shaft here. So I'll put a little bit of graphite dust on there rather than oil. The uh, dial's got a couple of cracks in it, there and over here. Uh, there and there are the holes where these uh, shafts go through, these bolts go through. And uh, it looks like a little bit of uh, either plaster of Paris or polyfiller has been uh, used to repair the uh, uh, this uh, ceramic uh, dial plate at some time. Ok, we've we'll got it back together and that's my uh, clearance between the hands, that's, uh, that's fine. So uh, it's just the final calibration I need to sort out now. I've set it so it sits uh, approximately right and I've left a gap under the bottom of the tube there. And the idea is I can raise or lower that tube and that effectively changes the reading on the dial. So uh, I'll just uh, look up the Met Office, which uh, is only uh, a few hundred yards away from me, uh, in actual fact, and um, set that up and uh, leave it uh, leave it to work.